Hey everyone, and welcome to a special series on the care of fish. Taking care of fish is more complicated than dropping a goldfish in a bowl and feeding it now and then. Uh, fish are pets, and they do require a fair amount of work. Uh, I set this up uh, under a year ago with uh, Jen's help, and you know we had fish when we were younger, um, and she's had. Uh, Goldfish for a while. So had nom flashbacks of your fish tank from when we were younger. <laughs> we had we had a couple, and yeah, that, that was it's fun. It's something that we kind of grew up with. So um, you have a couple of goldfish. I don't know if you want to talk about your fish really quick before we dive into this. But. Yeah, sure. Um, I've had actually two fish tanks. I had a freshwater fish tank that crashed, and we'll go into what that means and what happens when tanks crash in a few episodes. <laughs> um, and right now I have goldfish. I have two goldfish. And I had a um, I did have three goldfish, but one of them got sick, and he ended up dying, which was very sad, and we'll get into why that happened in another episode as well. Yeah, it's, um, fish are more fragile than other pets, so this kind of thing happens. Uh, the tank that you see behind me here uh, is my tank. It's got zebra danios and a mix of different live bears and some placostomus as well. So, um, so say you're interested in starting a fish tank. Um, the first thing you need to know is what do you need to get. Uh, a basic checklist of all the things that you will need to set up uh, a tank like this. So Jen, if you want to run us through the basic checklist and we'll see what we can talk about during that. Sure. Obviously you're going to want to have a tank. You can't have a fish tank without a tank. Um, for starters, the larger the better. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually harder to keep a small aquarium healthy. Um, with a small amount of water, waste builds up faster, you have to make more changes. Any change that you make is going to be much more precise, essentially. Um, you're going to yeah, be much more careful with it. it's going to be exaggerated it. when you make a, a small change, it's going to be amplified. Right. So, I would say probably like a 30 to 40 gallon is the perfect starter size for a fish tank. It's, I think this is a 40 gallon. Yeah, for reference, this is a 40 gallon. The tank is what's called a 40 gallon breeder. It's uh, 36 by 18 by 16. Yeah. It's a good size. Um, it's big enough to where you can fit a couple of really ni you know, nice bigger fish in there, um, but it's not so big that it's going to require a huge amount of space against a wall or in the middle of a room or anything like that. Um, you're also going to want a tank stand, and I can't stress this enough, make sure that you get a tank stand made for the tank. You can put a fish tank on a different piece of furniture, but the last thing that you want is to have water splashing out when you do water changes, you know, getting either rusting this metal stand or hitting the wood of this random dresser and then having it all collapse on you at some point. Yeah, this particular one, some of the benefits of getting it as a tank stand is that there's storage, and you can't really see because there's so much room, only so much room, but there's storage for stuff below, and the back is actually open, so uh, cords and such can all... Um, Squeak goes inside! <laughs> <laughs> you can't see the stuff at the bottom, but yeah, and it's open at the back, so cords from such can go in. Um, so yeah, that's the tank itself. With that, you'll also need... Um, you most likely need a lid on it. It helps to uh, keep in heat. Yeah, you're um, going to want a lid. Yeah, you'll, you'll Most tanks will come with one. Some won't. Some you'll want to buy a special yeah. different kind of lid. Yep. Um, you'll need a filter. Um, absolutely essential. Um, there's two kinds of filters that I know of. There's yeah. the hang on... No, there's three kinds. There's the hang on back filter, there's the under gravel filter, and there's the canister filter. Most people, you're totally fine with a hang on back filter, especially for a tank like this. Mm -hmm. um, under gravel filters, they're kind of not as good. They're, they're good for smaller tanks, um, yeah. certainly, um, though they don't offer the water flow of a, a hang on back. And then canister filters are better in pretty much every way, but they're also significantly more expensive and they're just unnecessary for something this size. My dad has like a 125 gallon tank that he's got a canister filter for because you're never going to be able to filter 125 gallons with a hang on back filter. Yeah. Otherwise known as a hob filter. Um, I've also seen it referred to as over the back. Uh, so, um, so you'll you'll need a lighting fixture. Um, the one that I have here is LED, um, and you know can also switch to a nighttime blue, which, without live plants or coral or anything like that, is purely cosmetic. Um, there's also incandescent and fluorescent. Um, you've got fluorescent, right? Yeah, I just have plain old like fluorescent tube bulbs. Um, one of the tanks that I had as a five gallon tank um, that my goldfish started out in and was it a ten gallon? It was a small little thing, five yeah. or ten gallon, okay. whatever it was. And it had um in fluorescent incandescent. One of the hot ones. Incandescent. Incandescent yeah. bulbs. 
and uh, my dad put in a different wattage of bulb in there, and we go down at one point and we look at the tank, and this is, you know, weeks, months, whatever it is, and I go to lift it, and I'm like, oh, the underside of this is all totally melted. We never smelled anything burning, and it didn't change the shape of the tank in any way. It was just that the plastic part of the lid had melted. Were the, the fish okay? Yeah, the fish was fine. Okay, yeah, what a danger with incandescent, especially in a smaller tank like that, is that incandescent gives off heat, uh, which is unregulated. You don't want that. You do want regulated heat, so getting a uh, heater is a must. Most, uh, you can actually buy a lot of tanks in stores as a full kit that will come with a tank, a lid, a light, uh, maybe a filter. Um, they will not come with a heater, so you will need to make sure to get, get that. Right. It is necessary to have a heater for like 90, 99% of your fish because they're tropical fish and they come from tropical waters. They like water that is like 75 to 80 degrees on mm. average. Um, obviously, if you're where we are in central or upstate New York, the air temperature is not always going to be 75 or 80 degrees. At least, God, I hope not, because that would be awful. Uh, 80 degrees anyway. This winter has been weird, so... Yeah. Um, except <laughs> that aside... A, a small exception might be if you keep cool water fish like I have goldfish. Um, they don't need heaters, but I prefer to have one in there anyway as a backup because I live in an apartment with not so great insulation mm. and they're against a wall in a corner. So, depending on how the temperature is outside, or how long, you know, if there's like a cold coming through the wall or whatever it is, their temperature can vary. So I like to have it set to a minimum of about 60 degrees, just yeah. so they don't get too cold. A, a, more, a, a cheap heater will often be preset to 75 or 78, which is a good median temperature for tropical fish. Uh, I would spring for a, a higher end uh, heater that can uh, change in range. The one that I've got um, has a range of uh, 68 to 88, so which it, even then would be a little high, I think, for your goldfish, but it's right. know your fish, but we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, the other thing I will say with a heater is, um, buy a good heater, yeah. invest in a good one. Don't at this point, don't reuse like someone's old heater that they had from like the 80s because it's a real good way to cook your fish, it's a yeah. real good way to end up with fish fillets. Um, I would also suggest a thermometer for yes. that reason. Not a sticky thermometer, like the little ones that you see pressed on the glass, but an actual it sits in the tank thermometer. Yep. The reason being is sometimes the internal thermometer on those will shut off because it's not really a real thermometer. It doesn't measure the tank water. It just says, okay, if I'm in 40 gallons of water, this is the setting it should be to have 40 gallons of water be 80 degrees. Yeah. So if you put too big of a thermometer in a small tank or whatever, it'll start heating up your water too much and you want to keep an eye on that. Also, again, sometimes it'll just plain shut off and just be heated all the time. My dad had an incident probably about 10 or 15 years ago where we came home and the water was like 90 degrees and there were just dead little fishies floating on the top of the tank because the, the heater didn't turn off when it was supposed to. I don't remember that. I must have suppressed that memory. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we came home from like a church thing late. I don't know if it was like a Christmas or an Easter, remember it was like a late yeah, coming home. Yeah, evening mass. Yeah, and there was just like, I remember like dead zebrafish. And we managed it because well, zebrafish don't are... Listen, don't listen, don't listen. Zebrafish are actually really pretty hardy. hardy. Yeah. So we didn't lose, those are the ones we ended up with like three or four that were pretty okay, and the rest of them just dead. Um, and then the last things that you'll need, we kind of went off on a heater a bit, but that's okay, it's important information. The last things that you'll need, you'll need some, you won't need some decorations, but they're good things to have. They offer places for the, the fish to hide, to swim through, it's engaging for them, and uh, to kind of uh, hide and de-stress a bit. Um, Which my, is why I would say especially. you do need decorations. You can say that they don't, yeah. but the more you have a really nicely, thickly decorated tank, there's yeah. a lot of hiding places so your fish feel safer. It sounds counterintuitive, but the more hiding spaces you provide your fish, the more likely you are to see them. Because they'll know, oh, I can sit here because in three inches in either direction, I can swim and hide. As opposed to, oh, there's one decoration about 12 inches away. I'm not going to be all out in the open because I'm not comfortable out here. I can't get away from predator fast enough. Yeah, and you can do, you know, I have a nautical theme set up here. Um, our dad has driftwood set up. Uh, you've got, like, Roman columns. Yeah, I've got Roman columns and steps. Yeah, so it, it, it offers hiding places. and. In my opinion, it's more engaging to watch as well. So it's a yeah. benefit for you and for your fish. Um, the last thing is uh, that you will need substrate and you will need plants. Um, but we're already going way, <laughs> way longer on this uh, first video than I thought. So was there anything else you wanted to say on anything up to this point? Um, I don't think so. 
And that's all the kind of basics, what you'll need before you get started. Yep, yeah, you can see an air stone bubbling back here, and that helps to oxygenate the water just by agitating the top there, but that's, you know, that more and more advanced stuff. That, power heads, other right. non-essentials, but stuff that it's looks like nice It's like timers, enough. too. I have some of my fish lights on a timer, so I don't have to worry about turning the lights on and off. It just clicks on and off automatically. Yep, so, but that's all more advanced stuff that you don't need, but it's helpful. I encourage you to check on that stuff uh, on your own. Um, so definitely uh, check back tomorrow where we're going to talk more about the substrate in your tank uh, as well as the plants in your tank. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe down below to see tomorrow's video and all the videos that come out. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram slash BoaterBug. I just added the Instagram account. I don't know if I'm still using it by the time this video goes up, but we'll see. We'll find out. Uh, and support me on Patreon.com slash BoaterBug. Maybe you'll see pictures of his fish on Instagram. Maybe I'll just post pictures of my fish <laughs> on Instagram. And if I'm having a headache, you'll also see that picture as well, because that's what Instagram is for. Don't listen to me. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good one, and we'll see you tomorrow.